Hello and welcome to episode 35 of the Make Things Club. My name is Sarah and I live in Edmonton, Alberta, Canada with my husband, two cats and baby girl Sadie. And it is currently December 5th. December 5th. And uh, nothing's going on because the world is in shambles. I thought I would do a quick episode that just talks about some random things I've been making lately and to show off a corner of my office that is not full of mess. That's reserved for the other side of the office where things are piled up to get them out of the way for this. So I was hoping this would be a little bit more put together before I did this, but I kind of figured if I don't do it imperfectly, if I don't do it imperfectly, I'm not gonna do it at all. My house is kind of coming together. If you're new here, we just moved from a two bedroom condo to a four bedroom house that is 75 years old. So it's got the works, it's got really cold winter nights, it's got squeaky creaky hardwood floors, it's got weird water pressure. Haven't noticed any ghosts yet, but my cats do tend to stare at walls and alarm me, so they might be here, they just haven't made their presence known. We have been living here for about three months now. And there are still piles of stuff everywhere. I'm getting to it. It's hard It's hard to do that when you have no motivation and an eight-month-old baby. Some of the things I wanted to talk to you about today are a couple of the knitting projects that I've had on my needles for the last little bit, one project that I'm currently working on, and a couple sewing projects that I've completed recently. I also want to show off a few of my new plants and how I plan on keeping track of them in the future. So, since this is going to be an under half hour of power, Let's get to it. We'll start off with some knitting stuff. Now, I feel like I've been knitting a lot lately. In reality, I haven't been. I did recently complete a very large project. And by large, I mean I used super bulky wool held double, which kind of torched my wrists. And on top of having mom wrists picking up baby all the time, I am kind of hurting a little bit right now. So I'm taking a break from knitting, even though I really want a finished object. I'll show, I'll show you what I'm working on in a second that I want to be done. <clears throat> so a couple of the things that I've been working on in the last couple months have been baby things. And how rewarding are baby things to knit? They're little, they don't take that long, and they're cute as heck. And then when you go out to the appointments that you have where nobody sees your baby anyways unless you're going to get flu shots or immunizations they always comment on the cute little thing and ask if you made it and the answer to me is always yes so i'll show you two sweaters that i've knit her one of them was supposed to be a coming home sweater and eh, my baby was little so this coming home sweater didn't fit her until she was like six months old but i will show you um two sweaters the first one is the sweater that i knit for her coming home and these are both the same patterns. I'm just kind of showing you this one to show how the pattern is supposed to look. So this is the Tin Can Knits Flax Light Sweater. So it's knit with fingering yarn. And it has this lovely garter stitch panel that goes all along the side of the sleeve. So this I knit for her. It's the zero to six month size. Knit out of Ancient Arts yarn in Sagebrush. It's yarn that I bought on my honeymoon when we were in Nanaimo. I think. So it's pretty. It has special meaning and I made it for my daughter. So this is the flax light with the garter panel and it's the cutest little thing. I think it'll fit some of her stuffed animals so I'm hoping to keep it in the family and have her animals wear it instead. And then I recently made the flax light sweater in the 6 to 12 month size which is this one. And what I did was actually omit the garter panel on this one. So it's just a simple plain raglan sweater. This is a great pattern. It actually goes from basically zero to adult. So you could make one for everybody in the family if you really wanted to. This was knit out of Mano Stel Uruguay yarn that I bought in Kelowna the summer that I last summer when we went to tell Ross's family that we were pregnant and I didn't know if she was a girl or a boy at that point but I loved this color so this is basically like her 
her main color is like a mustard golden yellow kind of color so this goes with almost everything she owns and it's just a cozy little nice thing that I can put on her when we go out for walks in the stroller and she needs an extra layer of warmth so I'm kind of in love with knitting baby sweaters I have a bunch more that I want to make for her but I think I'm gonna wait until she's over a year for most of those because they're really cute a little bit more labor intensive than just a simple raglan and I want her to get more wear out of it and right now she's growing a lot so it kind of feels like anything more intricate than this is just gonna not be worn as much as I want it to. Another thing that I made from Tin Can Knits, I don't know if I mentioned that, those are both the Flax Light Sweater by Tin Can Knits and Tin Can Knits is a great pattern designer for families. I think most of their sweater patterns come from sizes zero to like adult sizes so you really could just make everybody in the family a whole whole sweater collection. I also knit the Beloved Bonnet by Tin Can Knits and this is like everybody in my life that has a kid has one of these. It's like the quintessential baby bonnet. It's really really easy to knit and it's the cutest thing. So this one here is made out of wool folk. She's a spoiled baby straight up spoil baby so it's knit of wool folk so it is soft as heck and I don't know what the yarn base is called it's the one that has like the the braided like the braided one DK sized and it I don't know the color weight either because I didn't add this to my stash and Ravelry either way I was gonna knit myself a hat with it but then I ended up not doing that because it just sat in my stash waiting for an actual reason for me to knit it and my baby came along. So this is the beloved bonnet. She wears it every single time we go out. I also had enough yarn to make the itty bitty knit mittens, itty bitty mitts, teeny tiny knit mitts. And that's a pattern by We Knit Together. Those are actually in the car so I can't show them off but I'll put a picture in here of them and they are just thumbless mittens that I can put on her when we go for walks or when it's really cold outside and they have a string that joins them so she can't lose one of them. So those are really cute baby things that I've been making. Another thing that I made for my baby is this sweater here and it's kind of not done. I left the I left the ends unwoven because I think I need to make the sleeves a little bit longer but this is the graham cracker sweater by Lisa Woolrich. And it's two strands of cotton held double. So I just used Knit Picks cotton and I used these two colors. I don't even remember what they're called. I made this quite a while ago hoping that it would fit her this fall. But fall has come and gone and it's a little bit big. So it has this bubble feature that I wasn't sure if I liked. I left it only in the body. It actually comes into the sleeves as well. I held this up against her today. The sleeves fit her perfectly, but this is kind of supposed to be a 9 to 12 month and she's 8 months. So I think to make it last a little bit longer, I might knit the sleeves a little bit longer than they are right now. Probably should do that. She'll get more wear out of it. Or I leave it right now, she wears it like this, and then when she grows a little bit and her arms get longer, I can just add it then. One of the two. But this is the Graham Cracker sweater. I love the marl. I love the color. It's like like a really pretty garnet color it's very similar to what I'm knitting for myself except a little bit more cool toned and it has a little neck feature here I don't know which side has the buttonhole but it has a buttonhole that needs to be added or a button that needs to be added here and then it just closes up so I still need to do that too either way it's a super easy knit garter stitch the whole way and it's cute. I love I love things that are marled right now. So that is something that I wanted for her to wear with a pair of leggings, just like an oversized sweater look. So that's another thing I made for my baby. And the last thing that I made for her is actually really big. So we have, um, last year I spent some time making um, the snow day stocking, which is what this is. For my husband and I so mine is a bright pink his is a bright scuba blue and Sadie's because her color is mustard I've decided I hope she doesn't grow up and hate this color but 
I made her one to match ours. So these are currently hanging above our TV. The one good thing about the condo was that we had a fireplace so we could totally be like super lame and hang our stockings over the fire. But I worked on this one. It took me about three days to do and it really hurt my wrist. So it was, uh, I could have finished it in one night probably, but I had to take breaks because it was really, really painful for me. Every once in a while I'd hit a stitch and my wrist would pop. So that's something I've been seeing a chiropractor and my massage therapist with just because holding a baby all day really is not good for me. So yeah, the only changes that I made to the pattern, which is a free pattern from Pearl Soho, is that instead of doing a provisional cast on on the toe, I actually just did Judy's Magic, Magic cast on, since it's basically a toe up sock. So I did that instead of doing a provisional cast on, which kept me from having to do any kind of closing or kitchener stitch or anything like that. Um, and then it just comes with a little short row heel and then that's pretty much it. At the top it's got a little eye cord that you attach to the other side so that you can hang it. And then of course a big fluffy pom-pom. The one thing that I did do differently between the ones that I made for myself and my husband is that the pom-poms for those ones, I don't know if I put my whole heart into them because they're a lot smaller than this one. I don't know if I have enough yarn to redo those pom-poms. I might, but they just kind of seem really deflated and lacking love where this one is just like nice and fluffy and puffy. I actually really don't, really don't like making pom-poms. You can kind of see this one has like a disheveled look because trimming them is not my favorite thing to do. So I probably could do a better job. There's like pieces that are a little bit longer kind of sticking out. But really, I'm going to stop putting my anxieties into my pom-poms because pom-poms are just supposed to be fun and not really think about, you're not supposed to think about them that much. So this is the Snow Day Stocking by Pearl Soho. It's a free pattern on their website. And I believe that they also have a hat that kind of goes with this too. And it's uh, making noise because I've already added one of the things to her stocking. So these shaker eggs. So yeah, Christmas. The last knitting project that I have on the go is currently a work in progress. I made it. It's called the Make Bobble Cardigan by Naringa Ruke. Rook? Naringa Rook, R-U-K-E. And I fell in love with this pattern. I was just kind of on Ravelry in a bit of a rabbit hole searching for popcorn or bobble shape or bobble projects because I really wanted to make one. And I was really looking for baby knits and then I kind of stumbled across this pattern. I'm definitely in the middle of a row here. So I'm knitting mine. Where is the... I'm knitting mine just out of Knit Picks, Wool of the Andes. This is the Heather, Heather Garnet colorway. So it's a really cranberry rich red with a little bit of purple and a little cool toned one. And it's got these baubles that are just randomly placed. So the pattern tells you where to put them, but it looks quite random and just chaotic which makes it really fun to knit. Um, I am knitting the biggest size that there is, which unfortunately isn't really size inclusive because I think the biggest one goes up to a 4X. And if I'm measuring as a 4X, that's going to be a little bit of a problem. But with my gauge, I <clears throat> got a smaller... I needed to knit something bigger to get a smaller size. So I'm intending on getting the 2X out of this. So it's just a cardigan... There are buttons that you will add in, so there's buttonholes on one side, and I will add in buttons on the other, obviously. But it's basically just a simple raglan cardigan. It's meant to be fitted, but I'm making mine a little oversized just because. And it's fun. It's a fun knit. I had to rip back a little bit because I forgot a buttonhole. There's a little bit... I have a little bit of an issue with the pattern. It's not the most well laid out and it's not the most forward. So if you kind of are like me and you need explicit instructions to do something, you're gonna have to think about it a little bit more than that. Um, the pattern itself isn't chronological. So if you look through the pattern, you've got the first page that tells you about gauge and 
the stitches and all the stuff that you need and then it goes right into the bobble pattern so <clears throat> all that is is your rows and which which places have bobbles so the sweater is broken up into areas so if you flip a couple of pages it'll go neck to armpit and then another page it'll be armpit to bottom and then the sleeves are broken up so it, it doesn't go chronologically it kind of it's very PC, which I don't understand. Once you kind of get the gist of it, it's not hard to follow. But for the first couple of days, I was really intimidated by it after buying it because I had no idea what the heck was going on. So you kind of have to do a little bit of paying attention because you've got one page for the baubles. And then on the main page of the pattern, you've got to know that every 15 rounds, you're doing a buttonhole. And then on top of that, you have increases that happen every second right side row. So it's a little bit of mental acuity. You need a little bit of mental acuity to get through it, which for me these days, I very rarely have. So it's one thing that I was a little bit disappointed with is just that the pattern isn't I think well I think it could be better that being said once I got going on it it makes sense I get it just took me a while to come around and I really love just how it looks so far this is going to be something that I hope to wear a little oversized with a pair of leggings or a pair of jeans I anticipate I'll be done sometime before the spring um to be honest right now I'm just a little burnt out on knitting so this is something that I haven't touched for a while except to fix that row that I was in the middle of before I showed it but I love the finished project I love all of the variations people made I could see myself knitting this again in a neutral just to have something that's a little bit more appropriate to wear with everything in my wardrobe but I kind of wanted a fun bright color for my first one so that's the make bobble cardigan and super cute I found another sweater that I wanted to make as well um, I'm kind of in a bobble phase right now they're really fun to do I was intimidated by them because I am intimidated by everything but I found another pattern called the Celeste cardigan that I have yarn for so eventually when I finish that one I plan to start the other one or it'll wait I don't know <laughs> I just have no motivation for knitting right now it's uh, taking everything in my power to finish things. So there's that. The other thing that I've been working on lately is sewing stuff and I actually just got a serger which I am so excited about. I'm so excited. So Sadie had a really shit nap which means she's going to bed at six and my serger showed up a day early. I'm so excited. I have no idea what it does besides finishing seams. So that's as far as my experimentation into the machine has gone. But damn, seams are so much nicer when they're finished. So the first project that I made with my serger is the peppermint loungewear pants and the Ashton top. Now I would show them off to you, but they have been worn literally days in a row. And the pants are so crinkled and like oddly slept in that they're not worth showing so I'll put in a picture of the night that I finished them. I still have to hem these but damn linen pajamas are cozy. I probably could have sized down on the pants they're a little a little bit big but they're pajamas so. Um, <clears throat> the peppermint loungewear set is a free pattern from peppermint magazine so if you haven't heard of Peppermint Magazine and you're a sewist, check them out because they have some really great patterns. One of the patterns that I cannot take my mind off of is the Peppermint Pocket Skirt, which recently just came out. And I have ordered fabric for that skirt, but I kind of want to wait until a little bit closer to spring to make it just so that I can see what my measurements are going to be then. I, if you didn't know, <laughs> recently had a baby. Recently. Eight months ago I had a baby. And I had an emergency C-section, so a lot of my body has changed, <laughs> changed and deteriorated in weird ways because I just, I have a bit of a mom gut that happened. So things are constantly shifting with my measurements and the waist measurement is the most important one in the pocket skirt. So we'll see where my waist is at in a couple months and yeah, I'll make it for spring because right now there's snow on the ground and there's no sense making a skirt if I can't wear it. 
So the pocket skirt is beautiful. It was a collaboration with Paper Theory, I believe. So if you like linen pocket skirts, check it out. It's a beautiful pattern. I'm really excited to make it in a couple months. I made the loungewear set and the fabric that I used was from Blackbird Fabrics, which is a store in Vancouver. And it's the washed linen, so it's 100% linen in the sepia rose color. And I have a sample of it. It's really hard to like photograph because on, on my phone, whenever I took pictures, it came up as kind of a beige, but it is a dusty pink kind of color. And I really love it. It's still, it doesn't photograph well. But I made, um, I made a, a loungewear set out of it. And it's the coziest thing that I could ever wear. I'm really excited to wear it in the summer when it's warmer because the top is a cropped tank top. And living in a 75 year old house in the winter just means you need to layer up a little bit more than you would like. So in the summer, I'm hoping that that'll be nice and cozy and airy and breezy for me to wear just lounging around the house. Um, one thing that I am kind of learning is that I still am making things oversized. So I'm going off my measurements in the pattern in the finished, finished garment size. So that makes sense. Instead of going off what the measurements that I currently have are I'm going off of the finished garment measurements so it kind of gives me an idea of how much ease is anticipated with your size. I made the size H pants and the size 20 top based on my measurements and they're huge like these pants I could probably fit a whole person in and I went off of the size of my my waist because with pants you need to go off the widest part of your body which are usually your hips so they need to expand the waistband needs to expand over your hips to get on to your body so I was really scared that if I went with a smaller size it wouldn't fit over my hips but for some reason the actual side like I I could pull them way out <laughs> so they are a little bit big but they are pajamas so it really doesn't matter too much. The Ashton Top, which is a pattern by Helen's Closet, recently released a sleeve expansion pack. So I'd made an Ashton Top last summer just to wear around with high-waisted skirts and pants, and I loved it. But they released sleeve expansions, so you can make it into a more purpose, like, everyday wearing shirt. There are four different types of sleeves. There's straight sleeves, butterfly sleeves, petal sleeve, there might uh, maybe there's only three but they're really cute so I want to make a couple Ashton shirts with the sleeves <clears throat> so with that pattern I am going to probably cut out the size 18 just to go down a size because the 20 gives me a lot of extra room under the armpits so we're definitely going to try a smaller size in that one if I make these pants again which to be honest all of the pajamas that I've bought from like fast fashion stores have started falling apart really quickly. So I think one of my goals is to make myself a bunch of pajamas that hopefully won't fall apart after a month of wear. Um, granted, right now I live in pajamas for days at a time because pandemic. But I would like to start working towards having mostly me made pajamas. And I think I will make the lounge set proper. This is kind of all over the place. I really should have planned this. But the loungewear set comes with a shirt and pants. I was going to make the loungewear set properly, but I ran out of fabric and didn't have enough to do the shirt. So that's why I kind of squeaked out an Ashton top instead of doing the loungewear set. I would like to make the loungewear set proper with the shirt and the pants, but I didn't have enough pattern. I didn't have enough fabric to do that this time. So next time I'll get three and a half meters instead of three like I ordered and hopefully get enough to do the shirt and the pants at the same time. So next time I make them, I'm going to go down in size. The pants could be a little bit tighter. The shirt will probably stay oversized just because the majority of the weight that I carry is in my hips and my waist. So <clears throat> the shirt can be oversized, but the pants kind of a little bit big. If I put something in the pocket, they kind of fall off of me. Oh yeah, they have pockets. So, 
Other than that, I did also make a serger cover for my machine. And this is out of Rifle Paper Co. Rosa in canvas. So it's just a simple little cover that goes over top of the serger to do like a dust cover kind of thing. And this was really, really easy to sew. And look at how nice and neat the inside is. Man, I love my serger. It's just so nice and neat. So this is just a free pattern. You have to sign up for the newsletter, but it's a free pattern by Closet Core Patterns. And it comes with options to do a sewing machine cover or a serger cover. And I had previously made a, a sewing machine cover with that free pattern. So I just went in, downloaded the serger cover, made it basically in one night, super easy. Takes about a meter of fabric. You'll have a little bit left over, but a meter of fabric, two meters of piping and you're off to the races. So if you have a sewing machine and you hate the plastic cover that it came with, I highly recommend this pattern. It's a free pattern. You just need to sign up for the mailing list and they'll send you an email that will gain you, or they'll send you an email with a password that will gain you access to the sewing resource library. Super simple, worth it, and I have pretty machine covers for my machines. So that's pretty much all of the making that I've been doing. The other thing that is kind of taking over my life is the ambition of being a better plant parent. So one of the things that I've been doing lately is trying to remember to water my plants. Sometime between having Sadie and moving, a lot of my plants have been neglected big time. I had, I don't have one close, but I had a mother Pilea pepper, pepperomoid, why can I never say this? Pepperomioides, the Chinese money plant, the French plant. But I had one of them, this one, this one, this one. <laughs> I had this guy. I don't even know if this is the mother plant still. Still not really doing that well, all the leaves fell off. But I had one of them that I had bought maybe two years ago. It had three babies and I propagated the babies into three other plants. And I've killed every single one of them except this one. And the ones that I did have that I killed had little babies in them too. So I was set to have like a whole room full of them. And then we moved. And they all died. So this is my last one. I was thinking of getting another one, but they, they pop out pups so quickly that I'm hoping this one gives me a baby that I can propagate. And I can start the cycle all over again from this last designated survivor. So let's see the little baby leaf. So I'm hoping that I can keep this one alive long enough to propagate it. I'm going to be a better plant parent starting now. I recently got a couple new plants that I wanted to show off because I love them. This is the Philodendron Cordatum Brazil. So it's got this beautiful, beautiful variegation on the leaves, kind of half and half. So this one is a new baby and apparently they grow pretty quick. They're a philodendron, which if you've seen any pictures of my last place or even my place now, I have golden pothos literally everywhere. I have so many vines that I don't know what to do with that just hang and then my baby and my cats get into them and it's not great. So I have to deal with that but I'm kind of trying to branch out a little bit with other philodendrons. So this one is a Brazil, it's beautiful. Apparently it grows just as fast as the golden pothos do, which makes sense. So I'm excited about this one becoming huge. And the other one that I wanted to show off is the Syndapsis silver auguris, which is basically a satin pothos. And check out these beautiful leaves. So this one apparently grows fast too, which I'm excited about. I just want these ones to be trailing everywhere. They're so pretty. So one of the things that I've kind of been working on being a better plant parent is getting to know my plants a little bit better. So I typically would water once a week and I would do water at Wednesday. Then I got lazy. <laughs> a little bit of postpartum depression came in and I just didn't. 
So I'd like to get on a better watering schedule. I found a plant care tracker journal on Etsy that was just a download template. What? I found a downloadable template on Etsy that has um, these really pretty plant care guides. So eventually I plan on taking pictures of my plants and then making a template where they will fit perfectly in here and then printing that out so that personalized guide with my in with my own plants in the in the boxes here so it just basically has their water preferences sunlight preferences how you fertilize and the type of soil that they want and whether or not they're pet friendly and you can write in care instructions right here so I worked on this the other day and I'm gonna make myself a little notebook with all of that in it so it comes with the cover and I got these made out of cardstock because I ruin things and then the other thing that it comes with and I didn't realize that these are monthly so I only have three of them so in March I'll get more but this is a plant journal thing so you put your plant names here this is where I kind of messed up I'm like how do you do January and February if it's this so you basically highlight or circle which month it is and then you write down what you did. So there's places here and you can have color coding or you can make little little markings or whatever you want to categorize whether it's watered, fertilized, or rotated. So it's basically like a habit tracker from bullet journaling for your plants. So there are plants that want to be kept moist all the time. There are plants that want to dry out completely before they get watered. So this way I'm planning on keeping a record of how often to water them. And then eventually what I would like to do is kind of put a calendar reminder in my phone so that I know when to water my plants. Because I can be guilty of overwatering, And that's one of the worst heavy handed, too attentive kind of traits that you can have with your plants. Some of them really do benefit from being left alone. So I'm planning on working on this. This is one of my goals for 2021 and let's see how it goes. So this month is basically prepping. Next month I'm going to start using that tracker and we'll see how it goes with new growth in the spring. I also started using, and I've used this app before, but I'm using the Trello app where <clears throat> I'm keeping track of projects that I want to do, things that I have in mind for a later time. Um, for example, in the spring, I plan on replanting all my po my pothos plants. So that's something that I can't do right now. So I have it set up in my Trello boards as a backlog item that I can work on later. So the prep that I need to do for that is figuring out how many I have, if I need to propagate any, what kind of nursery pots I'm going to put them into, all those kind of project management things that I miss doing, having a job. <laughs> I get a little stir crazy here. So... Just taking care of a baby all day is really making me wish that I could have some projects to work on for myself. So that's kind of one of the things that I'm looking forward to in the spring is repotting a bunch of my plants, getting them all set up with new soil. Um, one of my plants is dealing with a thrips infestation, so I am hoping to kind of repot it with some new soil that hopefully doesn't have the buggies in it. And this is just another way of helping me keep track of that and focusing on what I need to do so that when the time comes, I'm not overwhelmed. So yeah, it's been a lot of knitting, sewing and gardening around here on top of hanging out with my daughter. So that's pretty much it. So thanks for watching this episode. If you're new here, hit that subscribe button for very infrequent postings. I do want to try and get back into more of a regular schedule, but I can't promise anything. Now that I'm kind of settled in my house, it's a little bit easier for me to just set up the phone and already have a space to do this. So we'll see how it goes. <clears throat> One of the things that I plan on doing a full video on is re, re dyeing over dyeing a shawl that I knit with avocado pants because I threw up red wine on it and it stained. So that'll be a thing that I do later. And there's a couple other projects that I had in mind for doing full videos on. So if you want to see those hit the subscribe button 
you want to follow along with all of the dumb things that I get up to day to day while I'm stuck inside my house, you can follow me on Instagram. My username is Loose Pages on Instagram. And if you want to follow along with all the knitting that I've been doing, my Ravelry username is Romperlust. So thank you for watching. I will see you in a couple months.